Hi there. Here we are. Let's fly Kerbal Space Program Chapter 2, the first episode. Let's just get some of the um, the frequently asked questions out of the way. Yes, I am going to be using many, many, many mods. Um, some of them I've gone into the config files and I've changed them. So even if you go and you use the same mods, you they may, uh, your vehicles may not behave exactly the same way as mine are. Uh, yes, I use a joystick. Uh, Cytec X52. I'm not saying it's the best joystick in the world. It's, you know, it's not the worst either. It's, it's an okay, it's an acceptable joystick. It's got a separate rudder. I'm also using Cytec ProFlight rudder pedals. As far as I know, I have yet to hear of Anybody else who is trying to use a joystick and rudder pedals at this game? I can't be the only one. Somebody else has to be doing it. <laughs> okay. Um, the music, this comes from, uh, it's a website, www.last.fm. L-A-S-T dot F-M. Go there and it's, you know, you can tell what kind of music you like and it'll randomly shuffle music. No, I don't know the titles or the artist of any of these. It's it's something. I don't know. It just shuffles a whole bunch of stuff. I have eclectic tastes, so we're going to get different genres, different styles, different artists. I like it. Does that sound kind of cool? I think it sounds kind of cool. Okay, um, so what happened here? We had the introduction where uh, uh, Bill, Jebediah, and Bob, they found a mysterious black monolith floating on the lawn next to, uh, right next to their launch pad on Kerbal Space Center. Uh, they, they went and they, they, saw, they saw the black monolith. It shot telepathic laser beams into their heads. It taught them something. Unfortunately, our three regular heroes, they died in a horrible, fiery accident before they were able to tell anybody uh, what it was that they learned from the black monolith. It was sad. It was kind of a tragedy. Um, their clones are cooking right now. Uh, clones are not yet ready to be decanted and broken out of their glass jars. But uh, and there's also the issue that their clones will not uh, will not have this knowledge. So whatever it was, the black monolith. Jeb was seemed very excited. He said it taught us something. And blah blah. And they couldn't tell him. They couldn't hear him. He's going too fast. The wind noise. Uh, that knowledge is now lost. The Kerbal Space Program uh, authorities, they, they sent some, uh, some, some more pilots, they sent some engineers, and they sent various learned Kerbals out to the site of the Black Monolith, and it, it's still there, it's still levitating with no visible means of support, however, it is not teaching them anything. Apparently, whatever it was that, that it, it, gave to, it gave to Jeb uh, and, and Bill and Bob, it was a one-time deal. However, uh, they set up a whole bunch of, uh, uh, in studying this, they set up a whole bunch of different sensors, and they measured it in every conceivable way, and they found, they realized that this device is communicating with other devices somewhere it, it's there's a very uh, subtle a kind of a carrier wave an uncertain often overlooked uh, frequencies and spectrums and it appears to be directing some kind of just regular communication and receiving uh, other communication from the general vicinity of the moon Apparently, the, the, the simplest the explanation for this is there is a second device somewhere out there, somewhere on the moon. The authorities of the Kerbal Space Program, they decide at this point that the thing to do is to, is to go send another mission to the moon in order to locate this, this, uh, this device, whatever device is there, and to start studying it, and hopefully they can get find out um, that the one that's on the moon, maybe it will not yet have discharged its message. Uh, maybe it will communicate that to you know somebody, a more careful pilot, and so they can actually get the news back to him and, and, and find out. Where the monolith come from? Who put it there? What is it trying to say? So, there we go. That's the plan. We are going to go. Let's load the spacecraft here. I need to clean some of these out. X cart eight, as I have not yet orbited the thing. As I was just goofing around, and I and I, I came up with I think is probably the the smallest possible space plane orbiter. 
that this is going to be um, I'm, I'm speculating this may be turn into kind of kind of a workhorse we're going to use this for a lot of different things uh, but this is a you know the smallest and simplest vehicle I could put together that you can do everything in orbit that I needed to and get my guys back back to Kerbin because as you recall uh, if, if you saw the first series on my particular planet Kerbin these guys they never invented parachutes you either land with you know a, a controlled piloted landing or it's nothing at all or it's a crash <laughs> okay well, all right, so here is the orbiter. Let me move this joystick out of the way. What I want to do now is I need to, that our, our, we had our scientific guys, they went and put together. We got some extra equipment that I need to, that I'm gonna use. Uh, first thing, let me see, I want a, we need to start mapping the moon in order to get a better idea. Here we go. This vehicle is going to go to the moon. And what is this? The ISA radar al al radar altimeter mapping module. Excellent. That thing is going to go to the moon. It's going to map. It also a long range muon detector because uh, those mysterious monoliths they they emit muons. So and this this is going to help us narrow down. It, what we? Wow, that's too big. Look at that. That's not going to fit. Okay, okay, so there's an issue. How am I going to get that to the moon? This looks like I can't stack anything on top of it either. Okay, here we go. Uh, one change that I made to, to this the C7 flight pack, I took this, what, what used to be just a, a regular, uh, just a structural piece, that, the base of the nose cone system, and I made this into an ASAS. So I think that makes a great deal of sense to have that thing. So I can put, I can put other decouplers and what's its uh, onto the nose of this thing. Here we go. What am I after? Where'd it go? Yeah, extremely small decoupler. Bang. Okay, okay, okay. So look at that. How how big is that thing? You see, we're not going to send it just like that. Uh, what is that, like two? I, bet, I think that's more than two meters across. That may be like three meters across, huh? Okay, okay. Can deal with this. Okay, that looks slightly less ridiculous. I mean, it's still pretty ridiculous, but slightly less. Okay, let's do a whole bunch of struts on here. Try and hold it in place. Do slightly better. <laughs> Isn't that absolutely ridiculous? <laughs> Okay, okay. So now, now, but hopefully that should be rigid enough and hold it in place. Now I need an assembly to get this entire vehicle, this entire apparatus, to the moon. Um, I've had this, this, uh, you know, in the previous series, in the previous episode, previous chapter, uh, I said that I really wanted to 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 have a reusable launch vehicles. However. I'm kind of backed off from that for now. I'm I'm waiting uh, to to get the um, uh, the ability to have um, multiple uh, multiple controllable vehicles in one launch. In essence, I want you know uh, to have two or more vehicles to to start out docked together and then to separate them after launch. One, as I. The game is, I do not yet have that ability. We're just going to go with a regular rocket. Okay, so there's a decoupler now. Let's see here. What do I need to get this thing to the moon? Yay, piano music. I like piano music. Uh, about one of these guys. Okay. And... No, actually, hang on. 
first, let's put some more RCS in there. More RCS tanks. There we go. Because I don't want to use the the actual the, the the planes RCS until we're on our way back. There we go. And let's see four of those. Like that. That's good. I guess I actually don't need it there. I should put it back here. That's right. That'll work. And which engine do I want? Let me see. This is this is going to be the the stage for getting to the moon and getting into orbit around the moon. Uh, let's go with this one. This is one of I end up using this engine. This is out of the uh, Kyle and Winston's Challenger pack, is where a whole bunch of these rocket parts come from. And I end up using, I think this is the single most efficient engine in that whole pack. I end up using it for a lot of things. Not a whole lot of thrust, but uh, for various applications where you don't need a lot of thrust, it, it works great. Okay, let's go ahead and... Oh, I forgot to stratify this, didn't I? In order to counteract, we've got all this wing up front. Let's go with larger wings. You end up needing larger wings than you do for just a regular rocket whenever you end up putting this plane up in front. Okay. See, that would be too much wing for just a regular rocket. But I think it might work out okay for this deal. Bang! All right, all right. Okay, now I'm also speculating that I'm going to need some solids on this outside of this thing. Actually, tell you what, no, I'm thinking different. I want to do it this way. There we go. We're going we're gonna to use liquid boosters. Um, here we go. Four of those guys. Alright, more struts to support everything. Keep it from falling apart. Okay, okay, I believe this is ready to go. We've got all the... get everything all set up. I wonder, no, hang on, I think I believe first we'll put some more struts because sometimes these engines have a tendency to wobble. Tell you what, let's strutify this thing like that. No wobbly engines. Yeah, that's probably better. It looks slightly goofy, but I believe this is going to work. Okay, let's call this X cart eight. Let's um, actually, hang on. This is going to be Moon Mapper one. The name of the mission. It's got the X cart eight as the base vehicle. We'll save that one. Let's go for a launch. Here we are. Okay, so who do we got? Let me see. We're wobbling. It looks like an extremely goofy vehicle, but it's holding together. So our first three heroes here, Stanley Kerman, Stimpy, Stimpy, you idiot. <laughs> Stimpy Qu Qu Quimmin. He's not Kerman, Quimmin. I'm not certain what that means. And Crasts Kerman. All right, guys. Big shoes to fill. Big shoes to fill with Bill, Jeb, and Bob out of the picture, but I am certain that these three are up to the task. So, let's go map them. Hey, this thing works. Let's check this. Yep, it works. See, it's beeping fast because we're, we're close to the Minolith. I never noticed that wobble before. That's interesting. Okay, here we go. First launch of Chapter 2. Stanley, Stimpy, and Crasts. Guys, are going to go to the moon. We're going to find out where those monoliths are. Let's hit it. There should be eight engines. Yes, it is. Very good. Oh, let's turn that SAS off as that is too violent. 
Okay. Careful, careful, gentle, careful, gentle. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 okay, okay. Abort, 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 abort. Oh, God, that <laughs> <poor word. laughs> Stanley, Stimpy and Crests. Okay, <laughs> um, you got off the ground, so you did get to taste the freedom of flight briefly for, you know, like 17 seconds, so I'm proud of you for that.